During the late 1970s to mid-1980s, laws were passed in Bhutan that marginalised the citizenship rights of Bhutanese nationals of Nepali origin. Following protests in the early 1990s, more than 100,000 ethnic Nepalese fled Bhutan. The vast majority found their way to Nepal. By 1992, the government of Nepal and UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency, had established seven refugee camps in eastern Nepal for the Bhutanese refugees. These camps are among the best refugee camps in the world. The government of Nepal and the UNHCR deserve considerable credit for providing security, shelter, education and health care. The World Food Programme ensures adequate food rations for the refugees. They procure the raw food materials and transport it to the camps. The Lutheran World Federation distributes the food to the refugees every two weeks. AMDA, the Association of Medical Doctors of Asia, is responsible for medical services in the camps. Caritas is responsible for the education of refugee children. Bhutanese refugees serve as the teachers and the curriculum is in accordance with the Nepali public school system. Regrettably, the likelihood of repatriation for the Bhutanese refugees in Nepal remains remote. There have been 15 rounds of bilateral talks between the governments of Nepal and Bhutan, but so far, not one refugee has repatriated. Although Bhutanese refugees enjoy considerable latitude by Nepal's open camp policy, technically, Bhutanese refugees are not eligible to work, own property, run businesses or vote. This situation has remained static for the past two decades. After exhaustive efforts towards repatriation failed, several countries together with UNHCR initiated a plan for resettlement. In November 2007, the government of Nepal publicly announced support for third country resettlement. Immediately thereafter, the Nepali government, UNHCR, the International Organization for Migration and the resettlement countries began resettlement-related activities. To ensure the safety of the applicants and prevent attacks and threats of violence by anti-resettlement groups, the government established armed police posts in the seven camps desiring third country resettlement. UNHCR is always the first point of contact for refugees. In order to be eligible for third country resettlement, a refugee must submit a declaration of interest form. UNHCR interviews the family to determine whether a case is eligible for resettlement and if so, identifies the most appropriate resettlement country. The only contact IOM has with the refugees prior to referral is the in-camp information sessions conducted jointly with UNHCR. Since late 2007, the US, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Denmark, Norway, the Netherlands and the United Kingdom have interviewed Bhutanese refugees in Nepal for resettlement consideration. Within IOM, it is the Resettlement Support Centre, the RSC, which processes refugee applications for resettlement consideration. The RSC prepares refugees for their interviews with country selection teams. Ultimately, it is the resettlement countries which determine if a family is approved for resettlement. The approval rate for Bhutanese refugees is 98%, among the highest in the history of worldwide resettlement programs. The goal of the RSC is to bring approved cases to the ready-for-travel stage as quickly as possible. This involves requesting and processing medical examination results, organising exit permit interviews, scheduling cultural orientation classes and assembling travel documents. The resettlement process can be a lengthy and sometimes confusing experience for applicants. RSC's Information Unit allows refugees to check the status of their case through walk-in queries, a telephone hotline or via email. Refugees spend long hours at the IOM compound. A midday meal of rice, dal and vegetables is served to the 500 to 700 refugees attending interviews and health assessments. The IOM Migration Health Division conducts health assessments for refugees accepted by the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and Norway in accordance with the protocols of each country. The Migration Health Division receives up to 400 refugees per day. Nurses capture height, weight, vital signs, visual acuity and detailed medical histories for the refugees. 
This information plus x-ray and lab results are available to the physician prior to the physician examination. The Migration Health Division uses a computed radiography system. X-rays are sent electronically immediately after the image is captured and interpreted by an on-site radiologist. Tuberculosis is a primary concern. If an X-ray indicates a chance of TB infection, sputum samples are collected and cultured to accurately identify positive cases. No refugee with TB departs for resettlement before undergoing the necessary treatment. Laboratory testing is an important component of the health assessment. Lab services focuses on conditions of public health importance. The state-of-the-art lab has been licensed to provide pathological testing by Nepal's Ministry of Health and Population. Patients with the most dangerous forms of tuberculosis stay in the Magic Mountain Isolation Centre, which provides comfortable individual accommodation and medical care. The Migration Health Division conducts pre-departure medical screenings on the day before the charter flight to Kathmandu. The final screening takes place at the transit centre prior to international flights. The IOM Cultural Orientation Unit provides five-day, 20-hour courses for refugees accepted by the US, Canada, Australia and Norway. In addition, IOM conducts a final orientation course on the day before departure to the resettlement country. The Cultural Orientation Curriculum provides information on employment, housing, education, social services and health care. In addition, cultural orientation provides refugees with integration strategies aimed at successful resettlement. IOM Nepal Operations is composed of two units, one in Damak and one in Kathmandu. In Damak, the operations unit provides ground transportation for refugees between the six remaining camps and the resettlement processing activities. IOM operates a fleet of 15 buses which log more than 40,000 kilometres per month transporting refugees. Damak Operations also organises 60 charter flights per month from eastern Nepal to Kathmandu. The IOM Transit Centre in Kathmandu is the final staging location for refugees prior to departure. It has the capacity to accommodate 400 refugees. The transit centre offers clean accommodation and food, plus 24-hour security and medical care. Kathmandu Operations has agreements with over 30 airlines and uses nearly 100 international routings to transport Bhutanese refugees to eight resettlement countries. Travel arrangements are organised for refugees with special requirements, for example, refugees with medical conditions and unaccompanied minors. At the airport in Kathmandu, operations assists refugees through airline check-in, customs, immigration and boarding formalities. It's important to note the vast majority of refugees are non-English speakers and have no previous international travel experience. When required, IOM provides medical and operational escorts. The escorts liaise with airline crews to ensure refugees are aware of food and beverage provisions how to use airplane toilets and are informed of all procedures. While in transit, escorts assist refugees to navigate between arrivals and connecting flights. Upon arrival at the point of entry in a country of resettlement, IOM or a resettlement agency receives the refugees and organises onward travel. By the end of 2010, more than 40,000 Bhutanese refugees from Nepal departed to a new country. It is anticipated 57,000 refugees will depart by the end of 2011 and 70,000 by the end of 2012. The success of this project is directly attributable to the Government of Nepal, the UNHCR, the countries of resettlement, implementing partners and the International Organisation for Migration. This has truly been a team effort.